respect the presidency, but I will not respect this president of the United States of America. Those words from Muslim activist Linda Sarsour from the Women's March on D.C. that was earlier this year. Ms. Sarsour now finding herself back in the spotlight, facing criticism over her latest remarks, calling for, quote, jihad against the Trump White House. Listen. I hope that we, when we stand up to those who oppress our communities, that Allah accepts from us that as a form of jihad, that we are struggling against tyrants and rulers, not only abroad in the Middle East or in the other side of the world, but here in these United States of America where you have fascists and white supremacists and Islamophobes reigning in the White House. Sarsour's so supporters maintain the word causing fierce backlash has been taken out of context and that her she's also been fighting back, tweeting, Right wing tries to demonize my leadership. Editing videos is their favorite pastime. Here now, Ben Shapiro is editor-in-chief of DailyWire.com and Hassan Shibli is chief executive director of CARE Florida, a friend of Ms. Sarsour's and was president when she made the comment. So, Hassan, let me start with you. Tell me how it was taken out of context. Well, jihad means to struggle for good, and she was very clear that it's our duty as Americans and as Muslims to put forward our best effort and to struggle to speak truth to power, to help the disenfranchised, to stand for the oppressed, no matter what the cost is of speaking out. And she's actually paying the price of speaking out and calling out the Trump administration's attacks on minorities, attacks against women. Uh, Linda's a revolutionary American Muslim proud hijab sporting activist, and we stand with we're proud of the tremendous work she's doing to stand with all the disenfranchised minorities to make America great by standing for justice and speaking truth to okay. power, which is exactly what jihad is about. Okay, so I first read about this on the Daily Wire um, but when you wrote about it, Ben. Tell me why you think that uh, it was not taken out of context when she calls for a jihad against the White House. Well, I mean, it clearly wasn't taken out of context. Everybody I know who posted this story posted the entire video as well as a, a large portion of the transcript from what she said. I don't think anybody is claiming that she openly called for violence against President Trump. But jihad means more than just internal struggle or quote-unquote struggle for good. I mean, we all know that there are terrorists all over the world who invoke the word jihad as justification for what they do. And Linda Sarsour knows that, too. I mean, she knows how to make a headline. She is a radical anti-Semite who has backed terrorists in the past. She's a person who has who has said that I am Stop smearing her. Don't smear her. Woman who's not here to defend herself. Yeah, it's you it's just don't it's like it's a local it's American it's Muslim woman a a proudly standing for justice. Don't smear a woman who's not here to defend herself. Shame on okay, you. Okay, I'll talk. To, fine, I'll talk about. I'll talk about Kara instead. Kara is an organization that was an unindicted co-conspirator in the Holy Land. Right. Foundation shift the topic. Exactly. Never indicted. Don't try to uh, drown out the conversation. Let's talk about what jihad means. She had me drown striving for truth. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You want to talk about context? Let's talk about the full context. Yes. Go ahead and ask me. Okay. This is what I want to ask you. The fact that she began this speech by praising a guy who has in the past talked about how jihad includes violent jihad. She started her speech with that. So let's not pretend that you can just, you're the one taking this one line out of context and then suggesting that it only refers well, to Well, I encourage sort of everybody just to listen to the speech for herself. So I, I listened to it, listen to it and I have a question to, to you from a, from a communication standpoint. So she wants to be an sure. effective activist. It, she, surely she is aware that when the general public hears the word jihad, it's not necessarily about an internal struggle and standing up for people's rights. I mean, we do that all the time in America, like, like our country's actually built on that. So I'm mm -hmm. curious Absolutely. why she w doesn't think that she would get some backlash if you're going to say those things, you are going to get, you know, stir up a hornet's nest. Well, that's why it's so important that she used that word, because we what? must reclaim that word from the extremists that have misdefined it and misrepresented it. So Muslim extremists and anti-Muslim extremists have both hijacked and distorted jihad to mean something horrible, to mean exactly what jihad does not mean, actually. And the only way we can reclaim our words and reclaim our language is by leaders proudly and unapologetically using it in the right context so we can show the world what jihad really means. Jihad does not mean war, I think that that's I and think that you're like war. whistling past the graveyard because like that that's already the, the reclamation Ben it's too late for that uh, of course no it isn't too late it isn't too late it isn't too late okay if it isn't if it isn't too late then I'd like to hear care come out right now and condemn the Muslim Brotherhood why would we condemn the Muslim Brotherhood? We don't condemn political organizations listen let's uh, not again every single time you want to try to distort the conversation 
Uh, why, you don't you condemn, uh, uh, why don't you condemn the KKK? Why don't you brother? condemn uh, the Lord's Resistance because Army? Every time a Muslim KKK. comes up, you start <laughs> condemning, you start asking Muslims to condemn, condemn, condemn. Muslims are human beings. We're proud Americans. We stand for peace. We stand for justice. We condemn all people. We condemn all people who engage in violence against right. human beings, against civilians. It, take that for granted. We are one humanity, one people. Let's get to know all each right, other. Hassan. Let's not promote fear and hate of each other. All right, Hassan, I'll give the last word to you, Ben. Okay, if you want to reclaim the word jihad, you should start by condemning organizations that promote jihad all over the world instead of associating with them, praising Why would them, we, and talking about Again, you're misdefining jihad. Jihad means standing for terms. justice. Jihad means standing for justice. It doesn't mean terrorism. And we stand against all terrorists then and all those who engage in violence. organizations that participate right. in it. This is not hard. We, we have and we do, just all as right. everybody else does. Thank you, and uh, God bless Hassan. you. God bless America. Thank you, Hassan and Ben Shapiro. Thank you so much. See you next week. The act is Dr. Kanta Ahmed, author of In the Land of Invisible Women. And no better person to talk to us about this today. Good to have you. Thank you, Abby. I saw you watching that. I mean, you're just shaking your head. I mean, because you're always on our show. You're talking about the positive things about the peaceful, loving Muslim community. What does something like this do to negatively impact people like you that are out there trying to promote it? She is tarring all Muslims with the idea that we are somehow going to combat the democratic decision of the American people. This president is rightfully and legally elected to power. She's calling us to resist that. And this is classic Islamist tactics mm. right out of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, playbook. She wants to corral the um, America's Muslims into a wedge against the, major, uh, against the wider society. And she wants America to believe that we think we are a victimized religious minority when we're among the world's most privileged Muslims that there can be. Well, she talks about jihad, right? She tries to defend herself by saying, well, you just don't understand what jihad means. You understand what this means. Not but not everyone in that audience takes it the way she does or you do. Abby, not only does she claim that we don't know what jihad means, I'm highly literate in Islam, as are many other non-Muslims. But she's being defended by liberals who claim that we are denigrating her right to discuss Islam as a religion. That is not the case. In this climate, jihad could be uh, uh, construed by a fanatic as a call to arms to act against our president or against our structures. But what she's actually doing is denying a profound Islamic right, a, a, a profound Islamic duty, which is our duty to society. We are called by the Quran to join and unite society, not fragment it. But the Muslim Brotherhood thrives and Islamists thrive by corralling all Muslims into believing that we're victimized and that we're persecuted and then claiming rights as a religious minority when really she's acting as a political totalitarian ideologue. Well, it sounds like she might have political ambitions of her own. Here's what she tweeted in her defense, Dr. Ahmed. She says, we will define our religion on the terms of the majority of Muslims. Learn from the experts. Reading is fundamental. What message do you have to her this morning? So actually, I take my insights about Islamism and the Muslim Brotherhood from the Muslim world. The most recent example is the state of Egypt, where Egypt's people overwhelmingly removed these kinds of ideologues from power in Mohammed Mercy. That is believing Muslims in the order of almost 90 million Muslims opposing the Muslim Brotherhood strategies in Egypt in a Muslim country. This is what she's trying to bring here. Liberals that fall for this are not only being uh, profoundly ignorant, they're imp empowering an, I, a, a woman that would seek to dismantle our democratic order. That is not in the benefit of of, of Muslims like me, many of us who can call her out and see what her hypocrisy is about. Well, your, your voice is so important in all of this. Dr. Ahmed, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, Abby. Always good to Joining us now is the founder uh, of Act for America, Brigitte Gabriel, Gabriel, and from the Islamic House of Wisdom, Imam Muhammad Ali Elahi. It's great to see both of you. Let's start uh, with you, Imam Elahi. Uh, wow, for her to say in that clip, uh, our, you know, basically, our goal is not to assimilate. We don't answer to you know, any push for assimilation. We answer to you know, the greater calling of Allah. She uses the word jihad. And I understand for Muslims that can mean striving and trying and struggling. But for most Americans to hear jihad, it has a different connotation. She understands that clearly. She's a sophisticated player. Do you what defend what she said about this president and really about this country in that soundbite? 
You know, jihad is an Arabic word mentioned both in the Quran and the Bible. Bridget, she is from Lebanon, she knows Arabic, and she knows this word is mentioned also in the Bible. If you leave it for us, jihad means to be a better person, more honest, more truthful, and more trustworthy. But of course, if you leave this jihad for ISIS, uh, leave the Quran for ISIS or Bible for KKK, uh, they have different interpretation of it. I'm not Are representing. You talking, no, I'm not Imam. representing. For for uh, yeah. you know yeah. Linda but, but I think she is uh, yeah. expressing her uh, frustration when oh, we yeah. have a She's president that he is yeah, putting ban on six countries that they are victims of terrorism and yeah. rewarding the, the biggest <sighs> founders of, of terrorism in the world let me guess. that brings frustration is Israel obvious. okay Imam I, uh, here, here's what doesn't go over well with most Americans and I'm gonna and then I'm gonna get to Brigitte Linda Sarsour getting up there and saying the fascist Islamophobe, white supremacists in the Oval Office. That is so purposefully incendiary. And I would say, if it, he weren't the president of the United States, he could sue for defamation. Because that's just garbage. That's meant to incite Muslims uh, to whom she's speaking. It certainly isn't meant to build bridges. That is meant to incite, infuriate. Infuriate's fine, but incite is not good. And, you know, Laura, and when she says our goal idea. is not this to is assimilate, her goal right? is Sharia law, is it not? Her it, goal it, it, is not to can, assimilate, can, it's for Sharia. Have, you, know, you know, when we have a president that one day he comes and he says that Islam reminds us mercy and compassion, at the same time, Does next she sound day, merciful? he comes and he says that Islam hates us. I mean, these contradictions in Twitters of the president Did she sound merciful? and fall out with the Islamophobia. So, I mean, Imam, you know, Imam, he, Imam, he, oh, this is not, this is not, this is, we're not in the mosque here. This is not a pre you're not preaching. Okay? No, no, I'm not, I'm not preaching. Okay, I'm you telling the truth. You just I'm brought the up truth. the merciful point. Does yeah. she sound merciful to you? You know, uh, you should talk with, with Linda herself. I'm not representative of Le uh, Linda, but the word of jihad that you mentioned, okay. I'm saying, is up to interpretation. Do you believe Muslims and have a it, duty it, to it, assimilate into American it, society, it, the rule it, of law, the Constitution, the Declaration? It is about interaction. You know, it's about Muslim and non-Muslim interaction. And by the way, it's not only yeah. Lin uh, Linda's, uh, you know, position. Lots of other Americans, they are disappointed of the administration. It's not oh, about Muslims. Oh, you know, welcome to the club. Everybody's disappointed all the time. But we don't hear we don't hear immigrant groups coming to the United States traditionally saying we will not assimilate. Not as not in the last 50 years. That has you we come know, here to be part of American as, society. As far as I Let's get know, Brigitte as, in here. We we got we went right, way no. long. Brigitte, look what what frustrates me is like I know Muslim Americans who hear this and they go crazy. They're like this. She does not represent us. And they hate hearing her words because it, it is not representative of what they believe and what the Quran that they believe. She doesn't want to assimilate. She wants to throw around these defamatory words. Uh, it's nastiness. It's hate. This is not positive stuff. And yet that's what she accuses President Trump of. I'm sorry. Uh, it is. It's very radical. She was specifically inciting hatred and violence. If these words were coming out of any other person, we would have said, well, you know, that, that, that really overstepped the line. But coming from Belinda Sarsour, you have to understand her background. This is a lady that comes from a long line of terrorists. Her family members are, as we speak, sitting in Israeli jails for conviction of terrorism. When you look at her praising in her speech at ISNA, Imam Siraj Wahaj, who was a co-conspirator in the first World Trade Center bombing in 1993. She called him her hero and her mentor. She called him how he talks to her, how she listens to his voice when she's laying in bed thinking about issues that relate in this country. And then she gives a speech at ISNA, which is the first organization Bridget, Bridget, in the are, Muslim terrorist uh, uh, organization. Excuse States. me, you got your turn to speak. It is my turn. Yeah. ISNA is the number one organization listed in the Muslim Brotherhood plan to destroy America. The Muslim Brotherhood is the oldest Islamic terrorist organization in the world. And so when she, when she speaks like that at ISNA, talking about urging Muslims not to assimilate, telling Muslims this is a jihad uh, by basically rebelling against the administration, telling them that do not assimilate, you want to please only Allah and nothing but Allah, that is called for violence to those who want to commit jihad against America, you know, to the homegrown terrorists, to something? the radicals who want to attack, yeah, to kill the president, yeah. as well as people Imam, like you and me, Laura, yeah, who are yeah. law-abiding citizens. Imam the FBI and Laura, the Secret Service yeah, Imam, should be monitoring her right now. Laura, okay, okay.